Hi there and welcome to All Things Photography. In this video I'm going to be showing you some Photoshop actions uh, that you embed into Photoshop that I've been using for the last couple of years and in particular I've been using them on this year's weddings and to be honest the, the results I've got and the, um, the feedback I've got from couples has been brilliant. They've absolutely loved the effects that I've done and they've used a lot of those for their wedding albums and photo books. So you know it's something that I think I, I want to show you how to use and also what sort of effects you can get because it is a really good alternative to any other action sets you may have got out there such as all the Kubota actions which incidentally I still use very much but there's obviously horses for courses there's different actions in both sets that um, are very useful now when you install Rad Labs um, from the company's called Totally Rad and they've got many different kind of uh, sets that you can buy and the one I've got here is called Rad Lab and it's where you've got various actions and various um, techniques and tweaks that you can do to photos but there are other ones which we'll cover um, later on. But what I'm going to do here is take a, a wedding photo that I took in Exeter in uh, Halden Belvedere Castle. It's just a kind of one turret castle. It's a very cool place. But I want to show you some of the actions available by using the Radlab. Now when you've installed Radlab into Photoshop there's two ways you can actually open it. You either go to filter and then you can see here totally rad has been installed with the Radlab there or you have one of these on your desktop. It's just a little kind of box here that you can either make really small so it'll fit anywhere on the screen without kind of annoying you or you can open it up and you can open the Rad Lab from there. Now you can obviously open this as a new layer so when you do any work it will um, and you've completed all your effects it will come out as a new layer. You can have it as smart object or you can have it as the same layer so we'll just do it as a new layer and then you just click on the, the kind of bottle here with uh, some sort of liquid in it and we just click on that and that will open Rad Lab up. It's a very quick interface, it's very good, very intuitive and there's loads you can do. Now what you've got here is the main photo that you're working on and over on the right here with the stylets uh, tab clicked it will show you all of the different styles, all the different actions that come in here. I think there's about 80 you can have and they're all infinitely tweakable. Um, so I'll run through a few of them but what I will say is that it's very handy that as you float your cursor over each one it will show you on the main screen what's going to happen to that photo so it's brilliant like I say it's really intuitive it's very quick to use because you can see instantly the effect you're going to get uh, so let's have a look punch out that looks quite good with this shot at the moment it was a handheld very dark and it was with no um, extra light it was just with natural light so it's kind of a snapshot as the bride was walking up to the to the roof for some photographs um, I just kept looking down and kept snapping away because this spiral staircase was really really cool um, so there's, you can either do it this way by clicking on each action you want to apply and as you apply each action it will actually appear over here in this current recipe you can see they're appearing as I float over them but they're in blue at the moment because I haven't actually clicked on them to, to make them actually part of the photo now there's two ways you can do this you can either use the, the full photo here or you can actually go to this we're on the currently on the before or you can go to the after comparison or you can go to a complete compare where it will load two photos side by side so as you hover over you can see the original compared to what you've worked on for now I'm just going to go back to the before and work on a larger image it's much easier for the tutorial but I'm going to go through a few of these one of the ones I like is lights on because it will brighten up the darker areas of the shades uh, of a photo uh, it's much like um, other aspects of Photoshop or some actions I've seen but it's very quick very good um, but for this one I'm going to use one of my favorites called oh snap it kind of adds a bit of contrast to the shot so I'm going to click on that and as I do you can see here it's now gone to black over here with a tick box and if I untick that you can see the action disappears again so it's great I can turn these on and off as I go so I can actually put a load of these in my favorites down here but you can also see once I've actually clicked on that I can adjust the strength from 100% all the way up to 200% so it becomes a really strong effect or I can just bring it down to a much more mild effect but I'm going to leave it at around 100 at the moment if I can get it back there if you double click on the arrow it will go, go back to the default of 100 and if you want to delete the action you just click on the dustbin here but you can also increase the snap and decrease the, the kind of snap snappability of the shot and you can increase and decrease the saturation in the image okay so there are various things you can tweak once you've actually got that action in there now as I said it layers so if we if we choose some more actions it will actually layer on top of the last one so I like this one warm it up Chris that's quite nice so it was it was a fairly overcast day so the light we were getting was fairly blue fairly kind of you know dull 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is hover over there. I like the look of that. It warms it up nicely, so I'm going to click on that. And again, once you've done that, it appears here, and you can adjust the strength. You can either go way up, which is too warm, or you can just adjust the coolness and uh, the, the warmth as you go. But again, I'm going to leave it just at 100%. Now there are a couple of others that I like. We've got loads here. Um, I mean, I'll I'll leave it to you once you've got hold of a copy of this, or or um, if you download a trial copy for 14 days, just just so you can have a play. But I'll leave you to explore them all. But there's some really good ones like Clarify, which will obviously brighten it up and add some more punch to the shot. If you've got saturation tools, there's a highlight separator, which will actually, if you watch the stairs here, it will actually highlight the separates from the from the darks and the lights, and it will actually make them stand out a lot more. So it, in, it adds detail where you can barely see it here on the steps. So if I go over that again, you can see the detail on the steps really kind of fills in nicely. So again, that's a good action if you've got really gritty kind of grungy shots you want to do. Well, this one's kind of grungy, but I'm going to show you something else in a minute. But I like that highlight separator. Then we've got optical and lens effects, and there's POS lens. So for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a piece of SHIT lens. Um, and it kind of gives you a real blurred around the outside, only focus and sharp in the middle. It's basically just the effect of a cheap lens, which is really strange because, you know, for, for tutors like myself, all we ever do is talk about don't buy cheap lenses. So everyone goes out and buys expensive lenses and then they bring an action out that makes your shot taken with an expensive lens look like a cheap lens. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's an effect, you know, it's it's an effect that's there for, for certain photos. So that's cool. Then we've got Easy Burn, so we can add a bit of a vignette on there. So I'm going to click on that one. And again, you can adjust the vignette size and also the strength of the vignette. So I'm going to bring the size down and the strength down a bit as well so we just in fact let's bring the size up so it blurs in more and the strength down just so it adds a, a bit of a vignette around the outside not too strong so if I turn that on and off you can see what it's done just kind of not a bad overly done vignette just kind of subtle one like that just to draw the eye to the bride and the steps and as we go down we've got other things like edge blur um, divine light is quite a nice one it'll um you can see just the the light here from the window and the dress it just makes it a bit more kind of fuzzy and dreamlike so it's, it's quite a nice effect uh, and then we've got Divine Light 2 which is a bit of a stronger one I quite like that one it, it gives you a whole overall kind of nice mood to the shot so I think I'll just click that one as well and again with the Divine Light you've got loads of stuff here you've got the strength intensity glow and highlight preservation so you've actually got quite a lot there so with the bride's dress obviously with that blowing out you, you can actually put, put the highlights back in so great little action that one uh, there's loads here. You have got flare up gold, and you can you can keep layering these on until you know you're bored of them. But there's there's loads here. Technicolor Dream World, Pretty Eyes. Uh, there's loads and loads to choose from. And of course, so like I say, when you layer them up, as I layer them, these all change as well. So if I get rid of Divine Lights, you can see they all change. So it's showing you them layered on these as well. So you can see what it's going to look like when you add the new the new uh, layer. So it's, again, it's brilliant. Really, really good. So if I take the easy burn off, you can see it comes off all of the styles down here. Put it back on and it applies it to all of them. So you've got bullet tooth, you can really go to town with these. I think they're particularly good for grungy styles, which is kind of the in thing at the moment um, for weddings and portraits and things like that. Then as we go down, there's loads of different ones here. You've got some real kind of old school effects from, from old film days and Fuji Chrome and things like that. Um, and then we keep going down, we've got Lux Soft if we keep going you can see how many there are there's it's just endless and you can just keep like I say layering it up then we go into the black and white so you can obviously add a black and white effect to those but if I keep going all the way to the bottom through the black and whites there's a few sharpening ones which are quite cool um, there's one called Boutwell or Bootwell magic glasses when you go over it it adds a real kind of punch to the shot um, and then we've got obvious glasses which again does the same but not quite as harsh and then something called gritty eyeser which which again adds quite a harsh effect so I, I think these are quite nice quite nice effects if you want to kind of give it that sharp and harsh look but that's that's all of those you can see there's tons there to choose from and like I said it's very intuitive and it's it's highly customizable for each each time you add something on there you can layer it and then move them out chop them in and out and you know there's it's almost infinite how much you can do with this uh, totally rad set of actions but again, we're going to look at the one here. So if we now have a look at the before and after, we go to the compare. We can actually compare the two, see what difference we've made. You can see what a huge difference that's made to the photo. There's the original, there's the after. Now for me, that looks 10 times better. It's warmer, it's punchier. It kind of suits the whole environment. It looks really good. And it basically sets you apart from other photographers. So if you've got a relatively amateur photographer taking photos at a wedding, 
uh, you can see by having these totally rad actions in your Photoshop you can just add that certain je ne sais quoi to your to your photos and, and just give them that extra punch and make you stand out from the crowd and you can either compare them as a before and after or if you look down here we can click split and you can split the photo show you show you the before and after within the same image so there's loads you can do within this it's very very cool and once you're happy with what you've got then we're going to open it into Photoshop in a second where you can do some extra work with it but if we look up here now we've got the stylets which are all these actions that you've got within the pack and then you can go to recipe so if I click on that you can see you can add this as your favorite recipe so you can if you like the recipe you've just done to that photo you simply save it as a as a recipe from here and we save it as let's not call it my bitchin recipe let's just call it wedding castle and I've now got that saved as a recipe so if I open this up I've got my bitchin recipe which I think is what comes with totally rab I certainly didn't call anything that um, and then below that I've got my wedding castle so each time I load a new photo I can apply all those different actions to, the, to every photo so you've got some consistency it's really good another thing here if we open up the history tab it shows you all the things that you've been looking at and you've been doing to certain photos so it'll give you a history so if you do an action and you forget what you've been doing to it if you forget what you've been doing to a photograph you can go in there and it will tell you each one you've been doing and it will show you which they are easy burn homestead black and white milk and cookies black and white so you know you never forget what you've applied to an image it's very very good and all you need to do once you've finished adding all your effects and actions is to go down to the bottom here click the finish key and radlab will apply the recipe to that photo and as you can see over here it will create a new layer for it so obviously you do any extra work you want to do within Photoshop, tweak the layer a bit, maybe adjust the uh, the opacity of it, then just save as normal. You can either flatten it or save it as a PSD file. So that's basically it for Totally Rad. So Totally Rad, um, you know, I think you can see how how I like using them on weddings because if you look at the differences here, you can see it just adds that massive punch to your to your shots. So you know, if you like what you've seen. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube we have got actually uh, a full review page where you can see some before and after photos that I've done from weddings um, but if you like it there's a link on the YouTube here where you can actually go and have a look at Totally Rad website um, or you can if you're on the review page then obviously we've got some links below where you can go straight through to the site but I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you like these actions I think they're very very good for lots of different photography um, and you know get hold of a copy alright thanks very much and we'll see you on the next video